If you wonder what a dreamer looks like, you're looking at one. We moved to America when I was going on nine, and we are originally from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. My family is all still there. My mother uh, was raised by a single mom who had a career, had a good job in Brazil. It was my brother and I and my mom. And she was just, the violence was too much. You know, she chose to make this really difficult and brave decision to leave everything and start over to a country where we knew no one, uh, we spoke no English, we didn't have an apartment, um, and she left a, a career in Brazil to become a housekeeper, and she cleaned houses, she worked in hotels, she worked as a coat check girl, and this is while we're learning English. And on top of these challenges, we were undocumented as well, so it was quite an adventure as a child. Um, and I remember thinking back, it was a really positive experience. You know, she came home one day with a suitcase, one for me and one for my brother, and said, pack your favorite things because we're going on a trip. You know, when we moved to this apartment that we found, there was no furniture inside. And as we were exploring the neighborhood, we came across a curb and it was filled with furniture. And I learned about boat garbage day. When, you know, you get a brand new couch, so your couch, that's fine. You take it to the curb and the garbage truck comes and crushes it. And it felt really wasteful and, and wrong and disposable. And we didn't have furniture and here is a curb full of furniture. So we were able to solve the problem that we had. We furnished our apartment entirely with what we found in the curb. And nothing matched. <laughs> we still have some of those pieces. But it created this responsibility for me that I needed to find homes for things, that we can find solutions to problems with existing resources. And the free store is an extension of that. At the free store, I was able to create this space that was dignified and loving and welcoming where we're taking these existing resources and putting homes to them. The, the, the free store is a remarkable creation, you know, by my wife. Um, I, I, I like to tell folks that I was initially skeptical when she approached me. She's like, hey, I'd like to come up with this thing called the free store. And I'm like, how does a free store work? Um, but we had an honorarium uh, and I was like, okay, you know, so we purchased that first uh, cargo container. It had been retrofitted into like an office with, with, a, with a display area. And, uh, and that was over five years ago. And, and it has easily been perhaps the single most impactful thing we may have ever done in Braddock. And when I say we, I mean my wife, because it was entirely driven by her and her vision. And f over five years later, it remains this incredibly vital uh, entity driven exclusively by volunteers. It was entirely inspired by my immigrant experience. Uh, one is the gratitude, right? Every day I wake up in this country, I'm so grateful I get to live here. The free store started with formula and diapers and clothing and uh, shoes and toys, and it grew into food as well. And we essentially were able to eradicate food insecurity in our community. It started in Braddock. We now have nine spin-off locations in the state. Uh, we just opened our first college one, which will be college run at Penn State in um, Keysport. And I'm working with someone in Phoenix for one, and someone in Texas, and someone in California. So it's hopefully a model that, that expands.